PC gaming. It is a most glorious and sometimes incredibly frustrating thing. When we're playing the latest AAA titles at frame rates way over 60 frames per second, it is truly magnificent. But as our hardware begins to age and our frame rates begin to dip, and we find that our once mighty system specifications are now more like the minimum specifications on the new titles coming out. We eventually reach that point when we're forced to change our graphical settings from ultra to high and then to medium. We even try using custom settings to get our systems to give us that eye candy that we crave so much. But eventually comes that inevitable moment when our computer shouts, I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. <laughs> okay, so your computer isn't going to use those exact words. But if you're watching this video, you have reached the point when your computer is now no longer performing at the level that you would like it to, so you're looking to do a little upgrading. And to be more specific, you are looking to upgrade your graphics card. Welcome back everyone, my name is Brian, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today for this uh, beginner's guide to installing a graphics card. The intro part of the video took a little bit more time than I was expecting it to, so I'm pretty much just going to get right into things now. When you're going to upgrade your graphics card, there's a number of different things you're going to want to take into consideration. I know that most of us are operating on pretty tight budgets, and although price is a pretty big factor uh, when it comes to choosing a graphics card. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video today because there's a number of other things that I've learned over the years that I'd like to share with you guys right now that I hope that you guys will be able to benefit from here. So the very first thing you're going to want to look at is will the card I want fit into my computer case? Higher end GPUs will often have large heat sinks and lots of fans and stuff on them and can be pretty long making them unable to fit into smaller computer cases so it's important to find out how much room you've got so you can pick a card that's going to fit. The second thing I'd say I've learned to look at is whether or not your graphics card is going to be bottlenecked by other components in your system. For example, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying, you know, like a, a brand new 980 Ti or a Fury X or something like that. You know, one of those graphics cards that's in the, you know, 500 plus dollar range. I think the ones I mentioned are more like $800. But uh, anyhow, I wouldn't recommend going out and getting one of those kind of cards if you're running like a dual core processor and like 4 gigs of RAM or something. Because what's going to happen is even though that graphics card has like all that horsepower and is capable of doing, you know, all of these amazing things, it's not going to really be able to do those things because it's going to get limited by your CPU and your RAM and stuff. So just to reiterate, don't go out and buy some super high-end GPU if the rest of your system isn't high-end and on the level with that particular GPU. The third thing on my list that is very important to take into consideration is power consumption. Now you already know that not all graphics cards are created equally. Some are significantly more powerful than others, but that also means that they use a significant amount more power to operate. 
And so that means that your power supply needs to supply enough wattage to run your graphics card as well as the rest of your system. So if you're not planning on upgrading your power supply at all, you're going to need to open up your computer and take a look and see just how many watts your computer is packing. You'll also want to look for PCI Express power connectors coming from your power supply. There are the 6-pin variety as well as 8-pin variety. Once you know what you've got to work with, you're ready to see if the graphics card you want to buy is going to work in your system. You can find out the power requirements pretty easily by looking up the graphics card you're interested in on a site like Newegg.com. Just look at the product specifications and it will list the minimum wattage of PSU you're going to need. It will also tell you, or hopefully will tell you, how many PCI Express power connectors your card requires. The fourth and final thing that I want to talk about is price. Sure, we could go on and talk about things like, you know, the advantages of AMD over NVIDIA and stuff like that, but that whole conversation is really its own video series all on its own. Uh, there's also lots of other features that modern graphics cards contain uh, that we can talk about, like how much VRAM, what type of VRAM, you know, most cards right now are using GDDR5, some of the new high-end AMD cards are using HBM or high bandwidth memory. There's, you know, you could look at you know, how many stream processors you're getting uh, on NVIDIA cards, how many CUDA cores. Uh, you could talk about your, uh, the core clock speed, the, the boost clock speed, you know, the speed of your memory, the, you know, these kind of features go on and on and on. And all of these feature sets are tied to price points. The more expensive graphics cards have more features and of course offer much more horsepower. The lower priced cards don't offer quite as many features a lot of the time and the, of course their uh, horsepower is a bit more limited as opposed to their big brothers. But in all honesty, for you guys that are looking to upgrade for the very first time, you're probably at this current time looking for something that's going to give you a good 1080p gaming experience and to be honest a lot of the you know quote unquote lower end cards right now are capable of doing 1080p gaming at max settings very very well and i'm talking about you know spending only you know in the 200 to 250 dollar range for that and possibly even a little bit below that for 1080p gaming the only time you're really going to need to go up to those really high tiers uh, currently, anyway, is if you're trying to go with, you know, 1440p or 4K gaming. And to be honest, most of the guys trying to do 4K are going to are having to run, you know, SLI or uh, Crossfire with, you know, these really high-end GPUs. So that's why I've left price for my fourth and final thing to talk about because Really, it boils down to what experience are you looking to get and then how much money are you willing or able to pay for it. So once you've made your decision and purchased your card and it arrives in the mail or you go pick it up at the your local brick and mortar store that sells that kind of stuff, you're going to feel just like a kid at Christmas. Uh, I'm, I'm dead serious about that you will feel like a kid at Christmas. Now it's time to move on and install the graphics card into your computer. The first thing you're going to want to do is to unplug your computer, then lay it down on a nice flat surface, allowing you easy access to your internal components. Remove your case's side panel, and then before touching anything, be sure to ground yourself out by using one of those anti-static wrist strap thingies or you can do what I do, which is simply touch a metal part of your computer chassis. So if you have an existing graphics card in your system, obviously at this point you're going to want to remove that one before installing the, the new one. And for those of you currently using onboard video, you'll need to remove one or two of the expansion slot covers on the back of your case in order to make room for your new graphics card. As you can see here, my motherboard has three PCI Express slots to choose from. Typically, you're going to want to install your graphics card into the top slot, which is where I'm going to be installing my graphics card. 
So first I need to remove the corresponding expansion slot covers just like so. And now to install the card I just need to flip this little latch right here to the open position. Then line up the pins on the graphics card with the socket on the motherboard and firmly press the card down until it seats and the latch closes. You'll then want to take those same screws that you removed when you were removing the expansion slot cover to secure your graphics card into place. Our next order of business is to supply our graphics card with the power it needs to push all those beautiful pixels. My graphics card requires both a 6-pin PCI Express power connector as well as an 8-pin. Once you've located the appropriate power connectors, you do exactly what I'm sure you're thinking you do and plug the power connector onto the corresponding socket on your graphics card. And that's that. Your new graphics card is installed and ready to fire up for the first time. Well, all right. Now, once you've got your computer all hooked back up and turned on, there's one last thing you're going to want to do, and that's download the appropriate drivers for your graphics card. Now, I know your graphics card came with a CD, but please don't even bother with that thing. The drivers on there are most likely way out of date, so you might as well go straight to the source and get the most up-to-date drivers available for your hardware. Now, where are these drivers located, you might ask? Well, depending on your the brand of your graphics card, you're going to go to NVIDIA.com or you're going to want to go to amd.com. I'm going to start here by showing you NVIDIA's website. This is what it looks like as of the filming of this video. And we're going to click up here on drivers, go to GeForce drivers. And they've got a couple different ways where you can get the drivers. Uh, they've got these automatic driver things where it'll auto detect what you have. So it gives you, I, I don't like that stuff because it installs you know, the software on your system that you really don't want, I, in my opinion, uh, and it detects it for you. But, I mean, if since you've bought your own graphics card, you, sh you know what it is. So why do you need this crap? Anyway, so we're going to go with the uh, GeForce card. And mine is a GeForce 900 series. If you happen to purchase something other than that, the, you'll select it here for, off of that list. Uh, I am not using a Titan X. That is way too expensive for my blood. I'm running a GTX 970. Next we're going to select our operating system. I am currently using Windows 10 64-bit. If you are using Windows 8 or Windows 7, you're going to want to choose that accordingly. And then get it in the language. I speak English, obviously and then we're going to start our search and then what you're going to want to look for is the most current drivers as you can see we've got some from September, October, November the most current one right now is December 1st 2015 so I would click on that and I'd come up here and click agree and download once it's finished downloading you'll be able to click on it to execute the file and then you just follow the on-screen instructions there to install your drivers. All right, now switching over to Team Red, the AMD.com. And theirs is a little bit simpler. Uh, right now, this is what their website looks like. And right up here on the top, they've got this spot for drivers and support. Here's uh, some AMD, their uh, APU drivers, which uh, if you're watching this video, you don't really need those because we're doing G we're installing a brand new GPU in our system. Uh, once again, you select your operating system. Mine's Windows 10 64 bit. And then you just scroll down to this portion of the page right here where it's got our download links. And here's the latest version of their Radeon software, the Crimson. Uh, you just click download and then your download will start. And once it's done, you click on it to execute the file, and then the program will walk you through. I'm going to cancel this because I do not have an AMD graphics card, so I do not need the drivers. 
But anyway, yeah, that's how you, that's where you get your drivers from. And there you have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it was very informative and I hope it uh, is helping you on your journey to upgrading your graphics card for the very first time. If you guys like the video, please click this one. And even if you didn't like it, you can click that one too. Uh, also, if you guys have any comments or questions for me, please leave a question or comment in the comment section that is down below. I'll do my very best to get back to you guys uh, to answer your questions or respond to any comments you might have. Uh, also, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I'm always working on more videos and I've got more content coming soon in the future that I hope you guys will enjoy just as much as you have enjoyed this one. Uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.